It's super easy to build muscle for most people in their 20s when they're active. As I got older, I noticed that it was more difficult and just things just change in general. The way your body metabolizes protein completely changes. Um, I've definitely noticed that. So when I compressed my feeding window and started eating all of my at least bolus protein at once and then um, some whey protein 30 minutes later, I definitely noticed significant uh, gains in muscle and also with fat burning, so simultaneously fat burning. So um, it was a game changer, you know, having all of my protein in a very short feeding window. So let's tackle a question that many people have, and it, can you get enough protein if you're just do, compressing your feeding pattern, whether that's one meal a day or two meals a day? And on the screen here, we're gonna flash up a study that kind of was revealing in my eyes and it showed the different uh, rates of protein absorption and muscle protein uh, stimulation in young versus old women. And again, I, I want to provide this as a context for many of you. So if you're listening to this and you're 20 years old, you might get a different take home message compared to if you're listening to this and you're over the age of say 40 or 50, right? Because uh, what this particular study actually showed is that in a one meal a day, so there's just one meal a day in, in older women, I think they were at the average age, I want to say it's around 60, but I could be mistaken by a few years. And they were comparing women in their 20s. And they found that even just eating one meal a day compared to three meals a day in the younger women, the older women had, through that compressed feeding pattern were able to stimulate muscle protein synthesis and retain more nitrogen. These are all proxies for um, you know, amino acid metabolism, if you will. And it's, it was seen favorable, which I think is important. So mm -hmm. we know a lot of folks that tune into our courses and, and so forth are, you know, mothers working, not necessarily 20-somethings, not that there's anything wrong with that per se, but a lot of you are um, a little bit older and that's great. And so I think that's a really good message because there's this perception, Deanna, that like we'll have to eat multiple meals to like keep pumping the brakes or keep pumping the gas pedal on this muscle protein synthesis pathway, but this study actually showed that, well, actually you absorb and assimilate more and stimulate muscle protein synthesis more with just one meal a day. Yeah. So what, you know, you've been physically active for a while, mm -hmm. you know, life. 20 years, right? <laughs> um, I think, I mean, you've been telling me, showing me the gains that you've been getting yes. are more favorable doing OMAD, doing the same training compared to when you're eating multiple meals a day. Yes, and uh, back to my 20s, you know, really, uh, it was, it's super easy to build muscle for most people in their 20s when they're active. As I got older, I noticed that it was more difficult and just, things just change in general. The way your body metabolizes protein completely changes. Um, I've definitely noticed that. So when I compressed my feeding window and started eating all of my at least bolus protein at once, and then um, some whey protein 30 minutes later, I definitely noticed significant uh, gains in muscle and also with fat burning, so simultaneously fat burning. So um, it was a game changer, you know, having all of my protein in a very short feeding window. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, you know, and uh, we've talked about this in the podcast before and on, on other YouTube videos. This isn't this compressed feeding pattern and enhanced utilization of the incoming food is not relegated to humans. You know, uh, various farmers and agriculture scientists are actually looking at, well, hey, you know, if I have these pigs or if I'm raising chickens and so forth, you know, how can I cut my fixed costs and my cost of goods and increase the profitability? So there's various studies that have looked at in pigs, just feeding them one meal a day or compressing the feeding pattern, taking the food away, same with chickens they actually retain more of the nutrients that they're ingesting. Mm. And, you know, I've shared with, you guys are probably sick of hearing the story, but we did this with, actually, after I read that study um, in April, you know, we started feeding our pigs one meal a day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're getting bigger, right? But interestingly, <laughs> the, the fecal matter doesn't smell, it used to smell like a oh, gosh darn uh, pig farm around here. We just have two <laughs> pigs. And so we were gonna have to get rid of the pigs and we love the pigs. and. Going OMAD, I mean, their fecal matter, their poop, their manure does not smell as bad. They're absorbing and assimilating more of that. Right. Um, so anyway, these are small anecdotal stories, but you know, the, the study that I will show up on the screen here and that we, we're, we've been talking about was not small or anecdotal. The, this was a, you know, a well-conducted study. Mm -hmm. And so the researchers hinted at this idea, kind of the second major take-home message from this lesson is this idea of fast digesting proteins versus slow digesting proteins. And it's kind of a, having a mix in there 
can maximally help our body recover from the exercise and the stress that we put on it in a favorable manner. That stress meaning physical activity that we'll talk about in other videos, but having a mix here. So a lot of people are kind of like, some people are anti-supplements like, oh, you don't need protein, you don't need bone broth, just eat your meat, right? And I get it, but there's literally studies that show that a mix of both fast and slow digesting proteins, fast digesting proteins would be like collagen, bone broth, whey protein, right? Slow digestive proteins would be like whole real food, meat sources, organ meats, things along those lines. They take a lot more digestive energy and muscle to break it down and absorb it. So having a mix is going to give you, you know, the, the widest range or swath of stimulating that muscle protein synthesis. And something too to note, um, when you compress your feeding window and you're used to having a lot, a lot of protein, especially animal protein, if it's really tough to do in a short feeding window, which I believe, yes, it is, that's where the beauty of whey comes in and collagen is that, you know, you can reduce your animal meat, which is great for the planet, and then you can bump up your protein with that whey protein and that collagen, which really does significantly bump it up. So it makes it very possible to get in the right amount of protein in a short feeding window without having to overdo the animal meat. And it's something that I noticed when I compressed my feeding window is that that I could actually reduce my animal protein um, because my body was assimilating protein a lot easier and I was getting the lean muscle gains without having animal meat three times a day, right? So my body became more efficient with utilizing animal protein so that I was able to add in a whey protein shake and still get, get the great benefits at a lower protein level. So it's great for the ketogenic lifestyle. Yeah, and so as a kind of follow-up for this lesson, in the next lesson, we're gonna talk about nibbling versus gorging and the differences here, but just wanted to give you a primer that there is studies that have looked at one meal a day in women and shown that it's certainly possible to stimulate muscle protein synthesis by eating one meal a day. Now, is that ideal for teenage athletes? Is it ideal for people in their 20s? That's up to you to figure out. But we've actually, and, and many people that are doing the compressed feeding patterns are reporting similar results to Deanna. But you really need to make sure that you're getting enough nutrition to compensate for the demands and the, the requirements that you're placing on your body. And so like when we go to restaurants or when we eat at seminars and stuff, a lot of people look at Deanna's plate like, wow, I mean, here, we were recently in Austin at KetoCon and people were looking at you like, whoa, you know, because you're eating one meal a day. So you, I, I think it's, it's harder as a woman because there's this kind of perception that, you know, women eat celery, bro broccoli and a little bit of steak, but you had no vegetables and a ton of meat and people were kind of looking at you funny. And, that, and we're not saying that that's the way that you should eat, okay? And my plate could look very different from your plate because I lift five to six days a week and I'm very intense. It doesn't mean that you have to have a ton on your plate, okay? Depends what your targeted goals are. If your goal is weight loss, it could look a lot different than mine. Um, you could very well be plant-based and you can make it happen with OMAD too. It might be a bit more difficult because of the fiber involved, but it is possible. And that's what we dive into into the book is that it really will fit any meal plan if you choose. Uh, so my plate did look very carnivore, keto carnivore at the seminar because I have different goals than you may have. And uh, my body at that time required a lot of protein. Does it look like that all of the time? No, it doesn't. Flexibility. Flexibility is the key. Yeah, so uh, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. And just to recap, one meal a day can work. Is it ideal for everyone? Maybe, maybe not. But it may be that as we get older, uh, for however our body works, changes in metabolism, digestion, things like that, that having a bolus meal and then giving the body a break may be favorable. And so we, we do see people, you know, I talk to my parents and so forth as, as they approach 70, like, yeah, I'm really, I don't need three meals a day. I just need like one, maybe two, you know? So um, we're seeing a lot of people just kind of gravitate towards that. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or comments or want to look at the studies, they're referenced below. And in the next lesson, we're going to talk about nibbling versus gorging and look at what the studies actually show for people that have multiple meals per day. And I think the results may surprise you a little bit based upon what we hear in the fitness space. So I appreciate you tuning in and catch you in the next lesson.